Welcome everyone. Sure glad to see you here today. And uh, I can see you on Zoom, but I can't see you on live stream, but welcome there too. We appreciate all of you being here. And uh, just really, I thank the Lord all the time for the opportunity to be able to to teach these Bible studies along with Jacob and, and others. And hopefully you're, you're availing yourself of the different uh, teachers that we have. Uh, Marco Quintana is one of them for sure. And check out RTN. I have a number of other good ones there. Well, today we're uh, continuing on with 1 John. 1 John 5, 4 through 12. And today's title is Belief or Death. There's an old story about a tightrope walker who did incredible aerial feats all over Paris. He, he would do tightrope acts at tremendously scary heights. Then he'd go a step further and do it blindfolded. And then he would go across the tightrope blindfolded, pushing a wheelbarrow. <laughs> an American promoter read about this in the papers and wrote a letter to the tightrope walker, walker saying, Tightrope, I don't believe you can do it, but I'm willing to make you an offer for a very substantial sum of money besides all your transportation fees. I would like to challenge you to do your act over Niagara Falls. Now, Tightrope wrote back, sir, although I've never been to America and seen the falls, I'd love to come. Well, after a lot of promotion and setting the whole thing up, many people came to see the event. Tightrope was to start start on the Canadian side and come to the American side. Drums rolled as he came across a rope, which is suspended over the treacherous part of the falls, and he did it blindfolded. He made it across easily. The crowds went wild, and he came to the promoter and said, Well, Mr. Promoter, now do you believe I can do it? Well, of course I do. I mean, I just saw you do it. No, said Tyrope, do you really believe I can do it? Well, of course I do. You just did it. No, 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 said Tyrope. Do you believe I can do it? Yes, said Mr. Promoter. I believe you can do it. Good, said Tyrope. Then get in the wheelbarrow when I go back across. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> How much do you believe? You know, the word believe in Greek means to live by or to commit. How often do we say that we believe Christ can forgive our sins and give us the power to live, but refuse to get in the wheelbarrow? So it all comes down to belief. Do we believe and live or come, become unbelievers destined for death? 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Verse 5, Who is the one who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? You know, what a great passage of Scripture. In the letters to the churches in Revelation, Jesus Christ, by way of John, urges the churches and Christians eight times by the Holy Spirit to be overcomers. Let's read those. Revelation 2, 7. He who has an ear, ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation 2, 11. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. Revelation 2.17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Revelation 2.26. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority. I will give authority over the nations. Revelation 3 5. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name 
before my father and his angels. Revelation 3.12 Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from God. And I will also write on him my new name. Revelation 3.21, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And finally, Revelation 21.7, he who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Now, if you're interested in what some of these things mean and how to understand this, I have a book called letter letter to the churches and you might want to read it because it's all it's a uh, bible study on uh, the first three uh, chapters of revelation always love the song faith is a victory that overcomes the world in the coming time of darkness apostasy and finally tribulation on this earth we are called to be overcomers we hope the lord comes to take his saints out before all this happens. But in any case, we must be prepared to overcome. Only those who have been born again can overcome. But we must hold on to our faith in order to be able to overcome the world. The letters to the churches in Revelation are there to prepare us for trials, persecutions, and tribulation from the world. A false world, world religion and world government will arise and will persecute Christians everywhere. Revelation 13, 7, he is given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Revelation 14, 12, this calls for patience, endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's com command commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Don't be fooled by the false teachers on TV who claim there's a time coming when Christianity will take over the world before Christ's return. Before the return of Christ to rule and judge the earth, there will be a time of apostasy, of falling away, a time where the saints will be conquered, and a time of great tribulation that calls for endurance in the faith. Many will turn from the faith in those days. I think it's very possible that Islam will likely play a significant role in this. So we see the beginning of the end now. We need to be prepared to remain faithful to Christ, even if we are told to renounce him or die. On to 1 John 5, 6. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For the testimony of God is this, that he has testified concerning his Son. Jesus came by water and by blood. Jesus came by water to add humanity to his deity. He came by blood by being born a human with human DNA. But Jesus did not come by water only, but also by blood. But the deeper meaning of the passage is to say that Jesus did not come baptizing in water for the forgiveness of sins, as John the Baptist did. Jesus Christ is greater than John. And so baptized us in his, his blood for the total remission of sins. Just as the Spirit testifies to the water baptism of Jesus Christ by coming in the form of a dove, the coming of the Spirit to indwell the believer testifies that the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us uh, has saved us. Actually, three testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. The testimony of at least two witnesses is required to settle a matter in the Bible and most laws which are based on the Bible. 
But here John points out that we have three witnesses. Now in the KJV, there's a phrase added to verse 7, which is this, for there are three that bear witness record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Uh, there is a question whether or not this phrase was in the original letter or was added later, but it is undoubtedly true anyway. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God in three persons, testify that Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice for sin. It was the triune God who decided this was the plan from the, before the world's creation. Ephesians 1, 4, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. 1 Peter 1, 20, he was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Now, please notice that he chose us because of, because of his foreknowledge before the creation, but that he was also chosen by the Father before the creation to come and to die for sin. God's testimony on this subject is greater than the eyewitness accounts of men. It's a perfect testimony that's borne out by the fact that, number one, Jesus was born of water. Number two, Jesus was born of human blood. And number three, Jesus was baptized in water. And number four, Jesus baptizes us with his blood for the remission of sins. And we are to baptize in water as a sign of his blood sacrifice. And finally, Jesus is the only salvation for mankind as decreed, decreed by God himself who created mankind. 1 John 5.10 says this, The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who's, who does not believe God has made him, it, uh, uh, the one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has the life. He who do, do, does not have the Son of God does not have the life. Not only do we have the testimony of things that have already happened by eyewitnesses, by, by the acts that took place, and by the triune God himself, but we also have a witness in ourselves. When we're born again, a change took place. God created a new self within us, giving us his Holy Spirit to live in us. Those who do not believe God make him a liar because they have not believed the testimony of God himself. And because they do not have the indwelling spirit to confirm, confirm these things. God's testimony is this. Through what his son did, we have eternal life if we believe and commit to him. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only life. There is no other way to life. Life without Christ is death. Life in Christ is life here and for eternal, eternity. The bottom line is that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have life, or we do not believe in him and have death. Belief or death? We need to pose this question to ourselves first and then to others who may be saved. And it's part of the gospel message. Do you want to live or do you want to die? It's a wonderful thing that Jesus has afforded us eternal life through his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm.